Yo, 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 I'm back today. Uh, today I have a very, very interesting uh, man to talk about. I mean, this man is, uh, should be taught in history, not really taught in American history or anything I knew. I just found out about him a couple years ago. But uh, the man that we'll be talking about today is your boy Mansa Musa. I just want to say that again. Mansa Musa. This man is said to be the richest man in history. Um, and, you know, what I got on right now, see this little bit of gold that your boy got on? Well, I don't know if you can see, you see Africa right there, but this little bit of gold that I have on would be nothing to Mansa Musa. Mansa Musa was the king of gold. He loved gold. He did everything with gold. Now, uh, Mansa Musa was part of the Mali Empire, and the uh, Mali Empire um, had a uh, dynasty called the Kita Dynasty. And the Kita Dynasty um, had 25 different kings uh, over a course of 400 years, but Mansa Musa uh, was the most influential and the most extravagant, and he's one of the most famous in uh, you know the the Kita Dynasty, uh, which was the Mali you know part of the Mali Empire or the dynasty that ran the Mali Empire in West Africa. So, with that being said, uh, you know, Mansa Musa uh, was in, you know, power from, uh, well, actually, I'm sorry, he was born in 1280, and, uh, you know, he was the 10th Mansa um, in the uh, Kita dynasty in the Mali Empire, um, and Musa actually, or I'm sorry, Mansa actually translates to uh, King of Kings and, um, you know, the emperor um, and the wealthy. And uh, at that time, you know, he was just extremely, like, extremely, extremely rich, like ridiculously, ridiculously rich, you know. Um, the, the, he was uh, said to be worth over $400 billion. I mean, this man was just uh, dipped in gold, dropping gold and everything. It's, it's crazy. I mean, it's, it's mind-boggling, you know, in the 1300s. Like, this is mind-boggling. So... Um, the Mali Empire, like, consisted of, uh, you know, territory formerly belonging to Ghana, the Ghana Empire, um, it, well, the Ghana Empire that we know today, and, uh, you know, also, uh, the Mali Empire was, uh, had what we know today as Southern, I always mess this up, Southern Mar, Martina, Martina, I always messed it up, I'm probably not saying it right, um, the West African country, and also, uh, you know, obviously, Mali. So, uh, you know, immediately uh, surrounding those areas, you know, he basically conquered those areas uh, during his dynasty. Um, and, you know, Musa held very, very, very many titles. Uh, people, you know, knew him as uh, the Emir of Mili, if I'm saying that right, uh, the Lords of the Mines of uh, Wangara, and he's also, uh, you know, called the Conqueror of Ganata, which I love that. I think that's like, Ghana back in the day, Ganata. I love it. I love it. I love that name, Ganata. And uh, you know, he had many of millions of other names. Um, you know, especially with his reputation. Um, and you know, according to like some criteria, uh, he, you know, he was regarded as uh, you know regarded as the richest man in history. Uh, some people wouldn't debate it, but um, you know, as far as now and what they know, he is the richest man in history. Um, and, you know, Musa was devoted, you know, he was a devoted Muslim. He was a pilgrim from Mecca. Excuse me, I'm trying to adjust my seat. He was a, a, a you know, a pilgrim from Mecca. And he made his known uh, name very much known uh, throughout North Africa, the Middle East, all of Africa, and uh, the Southern European, uh, you know, tips, uh, countries. And, um, you know, Musa had... Um, just ridiculous amounts of gold. I mean, so much gold that he would bathe everyone that was around him in, you know, in gold. Um, you know, he had a, a pilgrimage to Mecca, and uh, when he had a pilgrimage to, to, to Mecca, um, you know, it was reported that he had 60,000 men that went with him, you know, troops just marching along, you know, doing their thing you know, with him. He had 12,000 servants, um, and all of his servants carried uh, pounds, um, four pounds of gold bars, you know, so they were just carrying bars of gold through, like, countries. And, uh, you know, the, the, the heralds, they dressed in uh, silks, uh, you know, who, you know, bore, they, they bore, um, they bore out, like, um, these, these staffs, and they, and they basically there was like a, I forget what it, exactly what it was, but one herald had a had a gold staff that they bored out the middle of it, and they actually put gold that was mixed with uh, amber and copper, and it was said to be like one of the most beautiful staffs, and it was like his head uh, herald that had that, um, and you know he he organized horses, uh, you know he organized uh, just everything on his trip, uh, you know all his animals, the camels, horses. 
every animal that he had, he provided the necessary, uh, you know, food for the animals and the all the men and all the servants. Like that's crazy rich to be walking from West Africa all the way to Mecca and have enough money and gold and resources, you know, to sustain all these people to Mecca, which is in the Middle East, all the way back. I mean, it's crazy. It's mind-boggling. It's mind-boggling. So, excuse me, I was talking so fast. So, uh, you know, he also had, uh, you know, 80 camels too as well, uh, you know, as far as uh, carrying the gold. So the, the, the camels, uh, you know, are, were very, very strong animals because they had to carry between 50 and 300 pounds of gold dust. Yo, your boy just don't mess with that hard gold. He messed with that gold dust too as well. I mean, this man was ridiculously rich. Um, you know, he gave away the, the uh, gold on his way to Mecca. Uh, he gave away gold to poor, to poor people he met along his routes. He just was giving it away. That's how much gold he had. And he was a pretty nice person. Um, and Musin, uh, not only gave to the cities that passed, you know, you know, on his way to Mecca, you know, which includes Cairo and Medina, but he also traded gold for souvenirs. Uh, you know, Mesa Musa was very extravagant. He loved a lot of things from different countries and, you know, different areas of Africa. So, uh, you know, Mesa Musa was just very, very uh, flashy. You know, he, he knew he had money and he knew he was the man. So he just, you know, did what he did. So, excuse me once more. <laughs> So, also, Mansa Musa, um, on his route to Mecca, um, he, when he had uh, camels, you know, full with uh, gold dust, sometimes he would actually give a camel full of, you know, 300 pounds of gold dust to, uh, you know, maybe a, like a nomad or somebody that was just happy that he was given a camel. And then when they would open the chest, he would, you know, have them open, uh, uh, um, you know, the chest on the camel just to see the reaction on their face of how rich they were. I mean, this man was like really rich and it even amused him, um, you know, that he could share his riches with other, you know, people, you know, even poor people, especially. So, you know, uh, you know, Musa not only gave to the, the poor people, but he also traded for souvenirs, as you know, as I said. Furthermore, you know, if it was recorded that he also built mosques each and every Friday, everywhere he went. Like, yo, you got to have money to be building mosques. Like, you know, like, wasn't no rinky-dink stuff over here. <laughs> so Musa's uh, generous actions, however, uh, you know, devastated economies as well on his way to Mecca. Um, you know, especially in Cairo, there's accounts of Cairo and Medina and Mecca. Um, and basically what would happen is that Mansa Musa would go to, let's say, for instance, uh, Cairo in Egypt. He would go there, and when he, when he went there, uh, you know, he had so much gold and he flooded the city with so much gold when he was there that he brought, um, you know, the value of gold went down, you know. So basically when Mansa Musa went to, to Cairo, Egypt, the value of gold was very high because not everybody had it. And, you know, once Mansa Musa came and, um, you know, he basically had so much gold that he flooded the city with gold, the value of gold went down because not everybody had gold. It didn't mean the Mansa Musa was poor, but everybody had gold because he was just throwing it places and spinning it places and, and just flooding the city with with gold, which is crazy. I mean, that's power to go somewhere and you can mess up the economics by your spending habit. That's power. You know, that's that's it's crazy. It's mind boggling. I mean, it's crazy. So when he did that, the funny thing about it was, this is, this is how uh, much of a character Mansa Musa was. Um, what he would do is, since, you know, um, uh, you know, the prices of, like, goods and, and uh, you know, all kind of other things were, you know, inflated when he were there. I mean, you know, other than gold, which was cheaper. And I guess, you know, gold obviously was the currency or the current or the backing of the currency for the country. He also made food and everything else go up. He made food in and just whatever else you could think of was inflated and the price of all this kind of stuff was just ridiculously expensive. So um, what Musa did, what Mansa Musa did when he left Cairo, Egypt, which makes me just, I don't know why it makes me laugh inside, but it's just so like humorous and so like caring and kind and just, um, I don't know, it just, it just really like, is he's a character and I love it. Um, what he did actually is that he borrowed back all the gold that was in Cairo, he borrowed it, even though he didn't have to, but he borrowed it back. And he borrowed it at the highest interest rate, the highest interest rate that they would give to him. He borrowed it at that. And so when he left, he took the gold with him so that Cairo's economy could be good again. So he's, so their economy wouldn't be bad. So he basically 
messed up the economy and made it tank when he was there because he was so rich and he spent so much money. But then when he left, he didn't leave the economy messed up. He actually borrowed the money back at a higher interest rate so the economy could actually get a little bit better even when it, you know, once it gets back to where it originally was. And he had so much money that he could do this. And then he left for Mecca. Like, that's crazy. Like, yo, I'm in town. I messed up the economy because I'm a baller. I'm spending money like that. You know, I'm a king. And then when I leave, I borrow it back for in with interest. And I know I can pay it off. Like, Mansa Musa, that's crazy. You know, that's crazy. So, uh, you know, Musa's generous actions, you know, were just like, people couldn't believe it. He was so rich, they didn't, they didn't, they've never seen a person that was so rich that would just give things away to even poor people, you know. So, um, you know, uh, he at one point, um, you know, since he did this, uh, <laughs> he was the only man in history ever, ever to um, basically control all the gold in the Mediterranean uh, area. Um, you know, he controlled the price of the gold in the Mediterranean area. He was the only person that's ever done that. Um, and that's crazy. That's very, that's very crazy. Um, and so when he went to Mecca, he went to Mecca. Um, and when he went to Mecca, you know, they were just a stun that he had so many elephants and 60,000 troops and men that were made such a long trip that were still healthy and were still like very full of life. And, you know, in Mecca, they have stories about it where they were, you know, telling of how rich Mansa Musa's interest was, entrance was uh, to Mecca and just how uh, kingly it was and, and how extravagant it was um, when he went to Mecca. And, uh, you know, it's just crazy to even think about that, how far they even went from West Africa all the way to the Middle East and came back um, and had so much natural resources and supplies and gold to just not even, like, that. he didn't even sweat it. You know, he went back home and he's still ridiculously rich. So... Uh, you know, Mansa Musa also, when he left Mecca and he came back uh, to West Africa, to Mali, he uh, brought, you know, scholars and architects uh, back from, uh, you know, all over the Middle East, uh, East Africa and different places because he was a man of knowledge and learning and he wanted the best from everywhere to be in, you know, his vicinity and where he lived at um, in the university. So, you know, obviously to build a city up, you know, or a country up, you, you have the best of the best. You want the best of the best. So, um you know, it was recorded that Mansa Musa traveled through through the cities of Timbuktu and Gao on his way to Mecca, and uh, he made them part of his empire, um, you know, when he returned from Mecca in 1325. Um, and also, um, you know, the, the Malian, or I'm sorry, Mansa Musa being the king and the, uh, uh, the ruler of, of, of Mali, he um, had the city just on a lockdown and uh, the news of the Mali Empire uh, city you know the city and the wealth even traveled across the Mediterranean to the southern part of uh, you know Europe and um, at that point once you know the Mali Empire and Mansa Musa had such a big reputation uh, the traders of you know Venice uh, Granada uh, Gino if I'm saying it right and and you know soon added Timbuktu to the maps uh, you know to the trading route because it was such a good gold trading route um, also, Timbuktu was, you know, we staffed under uh, Musa's reign with jur jurist, uh, I'm sorry, I said jurist, <laughs> jurist, tourists, uh, astronomers, and math mathematicians. While Mansa Musa's place has since uh, vanquished, you know, since all these uh, things that he has, he have, you know, he's built, uh, the university and mosque still stand in Timbuktu today. So, um, Mansa Musa, no one really knows when Mansa Musa died. Um, some say that he died in thir 13, uh, 1332. Some people say he died in 1337, some scholars. Um, it was actually accounted that uh, he died, or a lot of people think he died in 1337 because uh, he sent Algeria, he sent a... Um, a uh, uh, representatives to Algeria to congratulate uh, the con you know the Algerian uh, Empire that conquered uh, you know that area. So no one really knows when he died, um, but it's said that he died in 1337. So that was a video on Mansa Musa, and I hope you guys learned a lot about the richest man in history, one of the richest men in history, and how he flooded the economies and uh, just the character that man Mansa Musa was. And um, you know, once again. One love as always. Yo, keep learning about your history. Keep knowing who you are. And yo, I'm out. One.